the combination of the iris and flood style illuminator made for a fantastic solution for navigating tight spaces with knots. Well, a, a fantastic halfway solution. The night vision is just phenomenal, but for this to be effective, we also have to be able to swap over to white light. And here is where the Geo4 Pro falls apart completely. Swapping to white light under nods just isn't gonna happen. And if you do get it working, you have this limp noodle on the end of your weapon system that isn't useful for, well, anything. Hey, what's up my favorite white haired future seers? Today I have a bit of an interesting one for you because I kind of have a love-hate relationship with it. I was kind of surprised that it kicked ass with nods, but then it sucked pretty bad doing any of the easy stuff. Like, you know, just be a basic ass flashlight. So come join me and burn some brain cycles with me while we look at the Rovivon Geo 4 Pro and see if this is practical at all. Now, a lot of other reviewers have already talked about this product, and like I said, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship. And I think a lot of those other reviewers are really, really glossing over the fact that you need to be able to use white light in like night vision application. It sounds funny, but when things go loud and bright, you're not gonna still try to use your tubes. The element of stealth and surprise is gone, so why would you continue to do that? Oh, it's okay guys. I have a high powered IR illuminator. Th this is high power, so, so it's, it's okay, it's okay. Let's go. And you know, white light, that whole application is the whole reason why so many of the top tier guys put their nods kind of on the top of their helmet so they can easily transition between the two by just looking down through their nods or being able to look up and have that white light transition. So for a silly range toy having only white or IR, I guess it doesn't really matter. But for actual real application, you need both IR and white light. And the ability to swap between them is absolutely pivotal. And that's really more so how I'm even looking at this product. Like, is it actually practical or is it just useful in like made up <laughs> Reddit scenarios? I mean, just think of some of the most basic of scenarios like, hey, our guy got captured, he's over there, he's wearing a red shirt and green pants. With just adding something as simple as color, you have to solve the entire problem in a different way and you're gonna see why I'm struggling to understand this product outside of like <laughs> YouTube shorts. Now, the GL4 Illuminator is small enough to be put on a pistol, but I'm not about handicapping myself further. So instead, we'll be seeing how the GL4 works in a PCC or PDW style configuration. I think then we can get a realistic idea if this makes sense in like a home defense or a CQB application. Now though, before we tear into this and we try to make sense of it together, let's take a moment and thank today's sponsor. Today's video was sponsored by HRT Tactical Gear. HRT provides industry leading plate carriers such as the LBAC to give you a load bearing carrier solution, along with the entire arc belt suite to give you the best the tactical world has to offer from medical to their top tier mag pouches. I just love how every piece is well thought out from the dump pouch to the medical pouch, and it makes the entire ARC suite one of my favorite family of products. So if you wanna pick up some HRT stuff, make sure to use discount code TLDCO over at hrttacticalgear.com. So much love to HRT and for all the support they give to the channel. Now let's take a moment and talk about potential biases. Now, much like other reviews that you've seen on YouTube, uh, Rovi Vaughn sent me this product for review and I didn't pay for it. You can also use discount code TODCO on this if you wanna save some money, but I highly recommend you watch all the way through the video to make sure that this product can meet your particular needs and your mission sets without falling short in any different areas. There's a ton of praise by other reviewers and I think Brass Facts does a great job of explaining where this product shines and where it kinda craps the bed. Just be careful with this one and watch a lot of videos critically because these products are provided freely to a lot of channels and I want you to be the most educated consumer possible. Now though, if you're gonna buy one of these anyway or you just wanna test it for yourself, then yes, by all means use a discount code and at least save yourself some money. All right, now we have all of our disclaimers over with. Now let's tear into this product, but before I can explain why I'm kind of a yes and a no and so it kind of makes sense to you, let's tear into it and talk about what exactly it even is. 
Looking at the GO4 Pro, we see it's a smaller pistol illuminator design with an IR invisible laser on the side and a front lens that houses both the IR and white light illuminator on the front. If we compared them, we can also see the GL4 Pro design is heavily inspired by the Surefire XVL2 weapon light. But the Surefire uses two different lenses, and it's probably because with this integrated design, well, the white light performance is pretty horrible. The front lens also has a lock and unlock setting so you can access the battery while the optic is still installed on the rail. Kind of a surprise to me. Some people seem to think this is life-changing. I, I, I don't care. I just align my laser to my optic, but if that's an important feature to you, well, then good news because it also eats batteries like crazy. On the side, we also see nice elevation and windage adjustments that don't move or adjust when bumped, and it's almost too much retention if I'm being honest. You will need a tool or a coin to adjust this, so be aware. The Illuminator uses a circular control scheme that has this weird half circle with a line to point at the correct setting, and then you have to try to jam your fingers into this tiny space to make any changes. The controls part of this optic is, there's no way around it, it's just capital H horrible. Like maybe with this it fits better into holsters this way, but to have a functional IR device, you have to be able to change modes and change them easily. This dial is just face-punchingly annoying, and it will make you want to throw this device across the room if you're using it in any sort of realistic application. Now, I'm trying to understand why the controls are so crap, but oh, oh, they just copied the same horrible one on the Surefire. Did you see the price of the Surefire 2? Nothing like paying $1,200 to $1,300 for some straight piss-level controls. I would be so unbelievably mad. So maybe if your brain came out and you were gonna buy the Surefire anyway, then yeah, look at the Geo 4 Pro because it's probably a better option and a ton cheaper. <laughs> now for activation controls, on the rear of the Geo 4, you have controls on both the sides to flick up and down or press inward to turn the device on. Hold for just a moment and it'll go into momentary. Just flick it and it'll stay in a constant setting. Now, I found it worked just fine because unlike some other videos I was watching, I was actually spending the time to ID my target like you would, you, you would normally do. So I didn't have any issue with it not staying in constant or momentary and actually found that part worked pretty well. Even with that though, I will reiterate what BrassFact said and that having all the buttons with the same functionality, it seemed like a pretty big missed opportunity. Like make flicking up and down momentary and then like push in constant with a click. And then hell, even have like a double push in to do like an override for a white light. Having smarter controls means you wouldn't need this stupid control knob that you can't use anyway. And you're certainly not gonna fiddle with that thing in the dark in a night vision situation. So you're making a lot of concessions with this already and you're making a, another pretty big one with the next thing I'll show you with the mounting system. Here we see at the top, we have a 1913 clamp design, but it's confusing because you gotta play the guessing game of what it fits on. I'm gonna pause here because look at this. I can't get it off. Like if you got to this point, like the lever is so small, you're not gonna get that off. Watch this, like you can't get it up at all. It's such a piece of garbage. So I guess make sure to bring a flathead with you at the range too, in case you ever actually wanna get this off. Good grief. I'm not totally sure why there's the same problem with the Somo Gear Engal and the Rovivon Geo 4 Pro. It's like somebody played a cruel trick on China and gave them the wrong 1913 dimensions because with both those products, you gotta kinda play a guessing game on what the heck it's gonna fit on. And there's certainly some variation in design and different rails. And again, we see a simple way to make this product functional with like a side tensioning screw. I probably should stop giving them all the test answers and let them fix their own product. Now, one thing I really was surprised by was the actual IR performance when it came to this whole PCC PDW application. But remember, true night vision application means you can use both white light and IR. Now, okay though, you can just do one. I could just add a flashlight to this, but then just remove all the other crap on this and get rid of the horrible dial if it just sucks anyway. 
Now, looking at white light performance first, this is abysmal. It's about the same as a pen light. You can see, sure, but you're in no way flooding the area like you would want in a more CQB-centric application. Punching light through a vehicle window would be about impossible, and being stuck with this horrible light when things went loud and bright would put you at a huge disadvantage. As we noted, it probably sucks because both lights are in the same housing, and it seems like the white light just doesn't have enough room within the area it's placed in to reflect out and actually be effective at all. Next, we can also flip things over and just use the visible green laser by itself, but this is probably the only feature more useless than the white light. So already in our testing, we have two features I can do without, but good news, it would be impossible to switch to them anyway. Now, IR though, well, well, this is just fantastic. Here we'll start with the IR illuminator only, and this setting gives you a nice flood that works great with the shorter night vision range, allowing you to brighten a wide swath and help you see a much wider area. The IR illuminator and laser combo mode was my favorite, as you could still easily see the dot while being able to illuminate dark areas, giving you quick activation on a lightweight aiming device. The IR laser only setting, on the other hand, was a bit bloomed and highlights the horrible lens that they're using. The laser just scatters all over and makes a huge mess when used alone in a room, making its application distracting and not really all that useful. I supposed if you tone down the laser, then it wouldn't show up so bright in that illuminator and laser combo mode, so I, I do understand why they did that. I'm just saying the laser only mode should probably be like low power or something because it's almost unusable with how bad it blooms. You're absolutely not doing anything accurate with that in laser only mode, but in close ranges, it may be just fine. I also wanna pause here. I think it's a good moment to talk about the battery life because well, it sucks. I did like one evening of recording, testing all the different modes and just seeing how they performed and I burned through two batteries. Checking the website, it says you get a battery life on the white light side of half an hour. Half an hour. We're again coming back to why I think this is just a fun Instagram toy, because anytime you start to use it in any sort of realistic capacity, you just kind of stand there and, and shake your head at it. Oh, weird. It's dead again. So that's the device and all my complaining. Now. Let's get into another side as to what were my thoughts when using this in an actual like PCC PDW night vision configuration. I have to say from an IR only standpoint, this made a ton of sense, particularly when moving in or out of buildings. I use an iris on my Manicore R that works by changing the focal length to allow you to see closer objects, but it also restricts light. By adjusting the iris, I can then easily use the illuminator to see within a cluttered environment. The combination of the iris and flood style illuminator made for a fantastic solution for navigating tight spaces with nods. Well, a, a fantastic halfway solution. The night vision is just phenomenal, but for this to be effective, we also have to be able to swap over to white light. And here is where the Geo 4 Pro falls apart completely. Swapping to white light under nods just isn't gonna happen. And if you do get it working, you have this limp noodle on the end of your weapon system that isn't useful for, well, anything. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It seems like a stupid thing to say, but white light is just a huge, huge part of CQB and night vision. And again, it's why I mentioned at the beginning of the video that most guys, when they set up their nods, have them set up on the top of their head so they can move their head and adjust their vision to be able to easily transition from white light to IR in just a moment because that's what's gonna happen when you use it in a real scenario. Having an illuminator that only does half the role you may need, well, it doesn't make any sense. And that's kind of my overall thoughts on this product just doesn't make any sense. I mean, yeah, it does let you add IR to your platform, but you also gotta add white light because this product is kind of sort of brain dead when it comes to controls, performance, and battery life. 
Now, in my desperation to find something useful for this product, I did also try this as a helmet-mounted IR floodlight with the Variarc, but it was a lot of weight and made little sense when the majority of features you wouldn't use were causing all the weight issues. I definitely struggled on where this product worked well, and thinking about it, it kept only really circling back to one scenario that made sense for this. It works really great if you wanna use it for IR, but at the same time, simultaneously don't really understand how IR works in any sort of realistic capacity. I know we all have that one friend, so you can make sure to tell them that this thing's just fantastic. But I did find from any realistic use, you're just horribly handicapped in terms of controls and performance. Now, I often look at cheaper end products to see if this is the solution we're all looking for. And outside of IR performance, I just did not find it here. I mean, hell, the 90% of why the mall is good is because of the ease of controls. I will say though, hopefully we see some updates on this guy and then we can review it again a little bit later to see if they've kind of fixed some of the issues we brought up. But hopefully this video on the Rovivon Geo 4 Pro was useful in your purchasing decisions. I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon members and all of our YouTube members. You make it possible we can test all this equipment and see what out there is worth your money and what may not be worth it. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what you thought about this performance and what product out there you think can beat it. I wanna try it and we'll test it out. All right, everybody, wash out. But with that, I will reiterate what Brax will reiterate what Brassfax said, and that having all the different function functionality, it just seems like I'm already thinking about like the sheer number of people that are gonna be out there like, why am I gonna use a white light under nods? I'm just gonna shoot at blue blobs and <laughs> commit war crimes. Like, no, no, you're not gonna do that. Like you, you have you have to be able to ID targets. You have to be able to see what color uniforms they're wearing. Hey, are they wearing our color uniform? I can't tell, they all look blue. So yeah, so white light is a super big thing. Um, it, is, it is wonderful outside. It is cloudy out today. I'm not yelling at clouds because they're not coming and going. It's actually nice, it's not hot. You don't, you don't see this, but I'm not wearing shoes or socks. And no, we're not sending any photos. Um, cool things I'm working on. Oh, I don't want to give away too much. Just think ready or not. Ready or not, ready or not. We got some cool stuff. Uh, other than that, I'm probably gonna cut this part out because I'm trying to think of what's coming up. Oh, oh, new bull pistols. Yeah, stay tuned on our Instagram and everything else. Uh, you can see some sneak peeks. All right, everybody, later. Have a good one. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta go away. <laughs>